Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with, with Barry Jernigan, and we're going to talk a little bit about his family and his research. So welcome, Barry. Thanks for being here. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, you know, I think you know I love this stuff. So <laughs> Yeah. So, um, Jernigan's not an Italian name, right? So, uh, no. who in your family is the Italian? Uh, my mom, my, my mom's dad, uh, both of his parents were born in Italy. So that's where, uh, where it comes from. Do you know what, what part of Italy? From, uh, Piemonte, from the, uh, province of Torino in the north, Nord Italia, um, up by the Alps in the Canavesi region, but also in, in the city of Torino as well. Also, now that's interesting because most people that I talk to are from the south. So it's good to get a northerner every once in a while to get that perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so now do you know uh, why they came? Um, I don't really know uh, exactly why they came. It was about probably about 1880, so... I'm not sure exactly what was going on. I would say probably poverty, like a lot of the people there. Um, I would say they they worked in the in the coal mines in Illinois, so um, you know they were probably looking for a better life. And eventually, they um, either bought restaurants or or farms, and then uh, you know kind of progressed that way after they worked oh, in the mines. So that's cool. So that's early. Mm -hmm. too, you know, in the 1880s or early, and I, I, I mean, I would have to guess that maybe they did some kind of mining, you know, over in Italy or something like that, since they are from a mountainous area, they probably gravitated towards that. They could have, yeah, yeah. I think most of them were Contadino or uh, Campagnuolo. They were farm laborers, you know, wherever they were, for the most part. Um, most of them were not tradesmen, you know, that was what they did there. Well, you know, when I did an interview... Uh, I was, I guess, uh, six, eight months ago or something like that with these, uh, with a couple of guys who wrote a book about Italians who were swindled to New York. And it was around oh, that yeah. same time frame. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, it was around that same time frame. And it, you know, it may have just been one of those things where they got to New York and they needed the help. They needed workers somewhere, you know, in the, in the Midwest and, Stuck them on a train and sent them. <laughs> it, it could be. Now, um, there was a lot of Piemontese in the same area in Illinois. I mean, if you look in the census in Cole City and, uh, and Braidwood um, and the village of Torino, which no longer exists, um, there were a lot of uh, Piemontese that lived there, a lot of, a lot of relatives. Oh, like, you see the same names in Frascosano, in, in the uh, records there, and in Pertuzio, that you see in Spring Valley Bureau, County, Illinois, and in Coal City, and Braidwood, you see a lot of those same names over and over again. So I think a lot of them came from the same area, and it could be that maybe there was something like that going on where, you know, they were tricked into uh, coming, you know, for the, you know, to the land of milk and honey for a better life, and, uh, and they, they bought it. You know, it could be. I don't really know exactly why they came or, you know, the details around that. Or, or, or maybe, you know, the, the, you know, a couple came. Mm -hmm. You came and then they started sending for people and said, well, there's work here. And, you know, because that's, you know, sort of like a chain migration thing or something like that. Yeah. Now, I know one of my, um, my uh, great-grandfather's brother, Charlie, he was an agent that uh, arranged for people to come from Italy. I do know oh, that. Really? I had read, he was a postmaster uh, there in Illinois, and he was also an agent. He was he was kind of a bigwig there, Charles Valerio. So, um, oh, so that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was he was helping to bring people over. Yeah, they were working with the ship lines and things like that to bring people over. Yeah. He was definitely involved in that. I've read and that. So, so that, so what, so around what you, so that must have been later. That must have been, uh, you know, maybe the 1900s, early 1900s. It, it may have been. I know in, in the 1880 census, they, they don't appear, but by 1900, they're there. So somewhere in there, but I think somebody had said on one of the census, I think it says like 1881 or 1880 for the, the time that they emigrated to America in the, 
in the census. I did see that. So sometimes that's not exact, but you know, you have to look in the in the. I haven't found them in the in the uh, passenger list on Ancestry.com. I have a full subscription to Ancestry.com, and I've looked in the passenger list there. I didn't find them. I found my my great grandmother. Yeah, well, that would have been before Ellis Island, so who knows? Now, so they went to Illinois. They stayed in Illinois. You said they opened up restaurants and things. So that's interesting yeah. to me because I like food and I, I <laughs> love cooking here. So. <laughs> but everybody has a restaurant story. I love that. <laughs> yeah, taverns and restaurants. In, in the village of Torino, um, my great-grandfather, Giovanni Ignazio Valeriano, changed his name to George Ignatius Valerio, later on but he and charlie started a um what they called the valerio hall where they had different events they had opera they had contests like beauty contests and things like that and they also had a tavern when the village of torino i think in 1925 or somewhere or 1922 something like that it was it was closed down and they moved that building to uh coal city and it was called the Alhambra, and it was there for a long time. I think the building is still there in Coal City, Illinois. Um, but that was a uh, a tavern, and then I think there was a restaurant attached to it, or something like that, that one of the other relatives had. But a lot of them bought farms in the area and did mostly did farming. But um, but the and Yazio, he ran a, a saloon for quite a number of years, actually. Yeah, so I'm I the, I don't know my the the only thing I know about Illinois is Chicago because I used to go there a lot. So in, yeah, <laughs> in, in reference to Chicago, where is Coal City? And um, it would be I think like to the the west and south, um, Grundy County, Morris. If you know where Morris is, that's Grundy County, Illinois. Um, Joliet is a little bit to the south and the east from Coal City. So like if you go south and the highway and then you head east you'll be into joliet so it's, it's in that area well so, joliet i know because of the blues brothers so yeah 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 <laughs> joliet so that's there was a lot of italian uh piemontese uh people that settled in joliet braidwood if you know where braidwood is near joliet a little bit uh, west and a little bit north is where coal city is from there so is that general area torino the village of torino was I think mm, kind of a little bit east of uh, Joliet. Let me be a little bit north and east of Joliet. Still in Will County, the village of Torino. There's a nuclear cooling lake there now where the village of Torino used to be. And that's interesting. So they, so they came and they, it sounds like they started their own village and gave it an Italian name. Yeah, it was, it, was a, a coal, it was a coal mine. I think the coal mine was like under the village, actually. Really? So, yeah, so that's where they... <laughs> That's where they were. So like a lot of coal mines in that area, they just, um, you know, they uh, collapsed it basically. And then they put a lake in there. There's quite a lot of, I've seen a number of lakes in that area that used to be coal mines and they just like blew, I guess they blew them up or whatever and they filled them with water. So you got these lakes now where, uh, where there used to be coal mines. In that wow. Area. That's so interesting. Yeah. 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 So now, so growing up, I mean, did did you grow up? Was it an Italian enclave when you were growing up? Not really. No, my 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 dad was from Alabama, and my my uh, mom's mom, her name was Southcombe, and uh, they were from Morris. So uh, there was um, my mom was born in Braceville in Grundy County, Illinois. So it was kind of it was kind of a mixed family. I think what happened in um, that area of Illinois. When the Piemontese first came, they mostly married other Piemontese. But then later on, um, they started marrying other Italians and other people, as long as they were Catholic, um, mm. would marry them. And then after a while, they started marrying other cultures from other religions. So they just kind of settled in and into the great melting pot of America, and they just all mixed together. So by the time she came along, I think it was pretty much just like American. You know, they were just basically American. Yeah, yeah. They were no longer Italian in that area. I mean, there were some people that still probably spoke Italian. My great grandmother, Ida Fenolio Godot, she spoke Italian all her life. So um, I did, rem I remembered her a little bit. She died in 1976 in Joliet, but uh, she lived in the same house in Coal City for years and years. 
and we did visit her. I do remember her somewhat um, when uh, we were kids. I was born in 1960, so she died when I was like 15 or 16 years old. We'll be right back. Experience Italy like never before, traveling with a scheduled group or create your own bespoke tour with friends with PhilItaly.com. Pack your bags and follow Phil. That's www.philitaly.co. Yeah, well, and, you know, that's, that's true. But, you know, back then, you know, my, I'm probably a generation ahead of you or so, at least my, you know, my grandparents. Um, yeah. And uh, in my mom's family, everybody mar- married an Italian except for my youngest uncle. Yeah. Uh, and in my father's family, everybody married an Italian except for my oldest uncle. <laughs> so go figure that out. But they yeah. lived in they lived in this Scotch Plains, New Jersey, which in the twenties was probably the middle of nowhere. I and mean, there probably were no Italians. I haven't I still don't know how they wound up there. They eventually got back to New York and then and then yeah. to, you know, Corona and Whitestone and places like that. But um you know, but that must have been a real culture, culture shock for my great, for my grand, not my great grandma, for my grandparents, yeah. when their oldest son wanted to marry an, a non-Italian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was some of that. I think in our family, I heard some comments that uh, that Nona had made about um, you know her grandson <laughs> marrying uh, or some what you know one of her grandsons marrying somebody who was not Italian, and uh, yeah, there was a little bit of a comments made about that <laughs> I, I do remember hearing that yeah. Uh, yeah so now so have you have you gone back to italy have you been back to to italy i have never been there no i do have a uh, distant cousin that i got on uh, find a grave and looked in the um uh, cemetery listings and i contacted someone who put a memorial on find a grave and he's from pertuzio and uh, he's a distant cousin uh on the valero side now Valero and Valerio are different. They're not. They're not the same family. Um, and he's uh, his last name is uh, uh, Balato, and uh, he lives in Pertuzio. And I did contact him, so I do have some connections there. And then there are um, the Fanolio Godot family. They still live in Prescrasano, and some of the um, my mom's cousins have been in contact with them, uh, and that they went over there. And stayed uh, in the house in uh, Prescrasano. So, yeah, we have some connections. I just have never been there yet. We've never been to Italy yet. So, yeah, probably in the future, we probably will go. I would say it's probably yeah, you have to go. probably a bucket. It's probably a bucket list thing to do. You know, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, you have to. You have to go, especially if you know somebody yeah, I, or I you know where their hometown is. It's 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 it changes your life. It really does. Yeah, that's that's what, we, what you've said to other people. Yeah, it, it sounds it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like a, a great time, you know. So maybe maybe a bit of a shock to get <laughs> that much attention from all the people in the town to hear you say that was like, oh my god, that's going to be interesting. But uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, eventually. And it, and you know, and they they love to see us. It, yeah, that's what you said. You know, it was it's truly it's truly a, an experience. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so now, so you, so you said you have the, the whole thing on ancestry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you found anything interesting with either your DNA or stories or connections that you had no idea about? Yeah. In fact, I, um, I recently, well, I've been doing a lot of research, most, mostly on family searches where I find most of the documents mm-hmm. and, um, in the city of Torino, they're in French and Italian and Latin, and in the other places in um, where I look in the Comuni, they're in uh, Italian and Latin. So I've had to uh, refresh my French from high school and then learn Italian, actually, to, to get into the documents and really get into the nitty-gritty. So I'm taking an online Italian course um, to get better at that, and then I had to, on Google Translate, I use that for most of the Latin to figure that out, but I'm, I mostly use family search, um, ancestry DNA. Mom and I both tested on ancestry DNA, and yeah, we found some uh, some uh, genetic connections there. And I'm helping some people with some of their research as well. And, and any surprises in the DNA from where you came from or where you thought you I might mean, come from? I, 
I already knew Press Grossano, so um, and uh, Pertuzio. There was a woman that lived in the city of Torino. I think she's passed away now, but I haven't had uh, connections with her for a long time. But she actually found some things for me over there in that my great-great-grandfather may have been uh, an abandoned infant. Mm. Um, see, the, the, the family name in America was Valerio. So uh, he was named uh, Guglielmo Valeriano when he came to America. He changed his name to William Valerio. He was my great-great-grandfather. My great-grandfather was born Giovanni Ignazio Valeriano in Prascrasano, but he changed his name to George Ignatius Valerio. But uh, Guglielmo Valeriano was born in the city of Torino. He lived in Prascrasano for his adult life, but when, as a child, he was born in the city of Torino as Valeriano Guglielmino. But he was an abandoned infant. He was born in 1825, in April uh, 18th, 1825. And I found his actual birth record in the city of Torino records on family search. But shortly after his birth, he was abandoned. He was an abandoned infant, and I found in um, what they call the allegati, or the uh, attachment to his marriage document to my great-great-grandmother, Caterina Enrietto. They were married in Prascosano in 1868, and they, when they got married, they attached other records, like their birth records, to prove they were old enough to get married, that they weren't, if they were married before the death record of the, you know, the widow, the person that, that died, the previous spouse, things like that. And uh, in his allegati, there is no actual birth record because he didn't really have one that they knew of, but they do have the information that he was an abandoned infant and his number that was, a t that attached to him as an abandoned infant and some of the families he was placed with um, after his birth. So that's in that uh, marriage record and it says April 18th, but it says 1821. Mm -hmm. But as you know, a lot of the dates are incorrect in the document. So you really have to go looking for a span of dates. So that's what I did. I went into the records in the city of Torino and I found in 1825 his actual birth date. But it says April 18th, so I'm sure that's him. I mean, it's uh, too much of a coincidence. I mean, uh, that he was an abandoned infant with a number and the Allegati, and he was born in the maternity hospital in the city of Torino, it says that in the Allegati in Parascosano, and then there it is, you know, April 18th, it's just the wrong year, and his name was changed, so, but I, I'm sure it's him. I mean, it's the, too many coincidences to say, oh, that's that's another guy that just happens to have the same name. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think it's him, so. And that and that's, you know, that's so interesting um, mm -hmm. that that they did that. Again, I did an interview with, with somebody who did a whole thing about the, the you know, the children of the wheel, you know, but yeah, they exactly. at the church and, and everything. And sometimes people will come back and claim them. They would leave a little ribbon or a little something in the pocket or something. Well, so if they ever wanted to come back, they yeah, could I say, I dropped off the baby six years ago and it had the Saint medal or it had a blue ribbon or, or something like that. Wow, um, that's interesting. And one very interesting a child that was abandoned was uh, in Italy. He was Giovanni Martino, and here he was John Martin. Oh and yeah, he was the bugler with Custer. At I read at that story. And yeah, that great story. I read that. Yeah, yeah, and he was yeah, an abandoned was... child, and apparently his his father did try to come and claim him, and he didn't. By that time, he didn't want anything to do with him, and he came to America and. Joined the army, yeah, uh, and and I think it was, I think there were seven Italians at with Custer in, wow. in the Seventh Cavalry. I didn't know. That. Yeah, I, I only know about that one, that one guy. Yeah, there were there were seven, and they they all got killed except for him because he they they sent him um, with a message to you know the other general colonel whatever. Right. Yeah. And he survived because he wasn't there, obviously. Because right. Yeah. You know, he he was sent with a message. Uh, but yeah, interesting. And he was an abandoned. He was abandoned in Italy. Uh, so you know, very interesting story there. Yeah. Um, so so now you now have you researched your your dad's family? Uh, the Alabama family. Yeah, yeah. I researched some of them. 
Um, that now that is an interesting thing because um, when I did my Y chromosome test, I didn't match any of the other guys named Jernigan. Really? So yeah, and then somebody told me, well, you can put like a general match to see who you do match, and I matched all these guys named Chandler. <laughs> so then I ended up joining the Chandler Family Association. I, in fact, I eventually was the um, deputy uh, chairman for the genealogy panel. We helped other people with their research. So all these other people are in the Chandler Family Association genealogy database, lineage database, but I couldn't get in there because I couldn't find the actual, brick, you know, the um, uh, connection, you know, to, to the Chandler. I don't know what it is. So I know back to my great great grandfather, James Silas Jernigan, who was born in um, probably in Gunnersville, Marshall County, Alabama, or maybe he was born in Tennessee. We're not really sure. And I even went to Gunnersville and tried to find, you know, the smoking gun, but I couldn't find it in any of the documents. I looked in all the land records and, and everything, the probate records, and just nothing, you know. But a lot of the Alabama records, they, well, the difference between American records and Italian records, this is why I love Italian records, as you know, they are so full of information. I don't know if they were just nosy about everybody or the authorities wanted to know every little detail or what the deal was, but... You know, Napoleon, like, well, it was because of Napoleon, so it was probably... It, it could be, I guess, but even... He wanted uh, to know everything about everybody, probably. I, yeah. I, I could only guess. Yeah, it could be. It it could be that it, that it was the Napoleonic Code that maybe that's why because they followed that. But um, like in Alabama, it's like, well, everyone knows Mary is his daughter. There's no reason to put her husband's <laughs> name in this. You know, they're just like everyone knew who they were. They weren't thinking that hundreds of years later, some genealogists were going to try to find out these people. <laughs> it's just they just well, put you know. Well, what the, they other, knew, you know? the other thing that makes it easy for the Italian is that the women keep their name. Exactly. Yeah, they keep that, their maiden that, name. That makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, you know, they, they've got their, their fathers and sometimes their fathers and their mother's names and their ages and their occupations. And if they were born in a different town, they had that. Yeah, I just, I just love staying in Italian documents. So I just stay there because you get <laughs> results. You know, I recently found my first sixth great grandfather, you know. So I'm not now back to at least one sixth great grandparent. I've actually found his name in a document. So. You know, it, so, it so, so now you don't know how the name Jernigan came about. Um, I believe that it what what they call a um, non paternal event, an NPE. So either a man named Chandler had a relationship with a woman, and then he died, or or they were never married, or whatever the deal was, and then she married somebody else whose name was Jernigan. Uh, and then the child was just named, you know, James Silas Jernigan. I believe James Silas Jernigan's father's surname was probably Chandler. I think that's where the connection is. I just don't know who he was, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, either was that a wedlock or something, or she used her name, or yeah. We have no, I have no idea. So back then, I don't think they worried too much about adoption papers or anything like that. She may have had the no. They just. Yeah, the they, just, they the just did it on their. They just did it on their own, and that was it. There wasn't. I don't think there was a lot of things that. It's interesting because the records, the probate records in that area in Alabama, were called orphans court records. So, but but uh, I think a lot of the orphans were just created on their own. They didn't. They didn't really have an orphanage. I don't think. Uh, you know, they just. Uh, but that was what it was uh, created for. Yeah, so now, so did you find anything back with the Chandlers? How far back they go? I'm assuming they go back pretty far, yeah. Well, the Chandlers, um, I think they were Chandler, and they probably came over with William the Conqueror, I think, from Normandy. I think that's what they probably figure. Um, and, of course, in England, it wasn't until, like, the 12 or 1300s they started actually using surnames. So prior to that, only some of the nobility actually had any kind of title you know, the surname or a, a, a lot of times in, in Normandy, they were named after the castle, wherever the castle was situated in the town that they, uh, that they had the manor that basically they were, um, you know, William's uh, knights, basically. And then when they came over to England and he gave them land uh, in England, they took it away from the Anglo-Saxons Anglo and gave it to his Norman in Breton. Um, and Jernigan, I think, is actually Breton. 
So I think that's actually a Breton name. So I think that was also Jeremy Gone. I mean, if you say it in French, you know, Jeremy Gone, I mean, it even sounds French, you know. It does, yeah, yeah. So, and I think that um, that was also one of the knights of, um, probably the knight of uh, Alan of Brittany, he probably had a knight named Jeremy Gone that he gave land to in um, uh, Northumbria. So, yeah, I think that was probably what happened. They were Normans. Yeah, I could actually, I trace back, I could trace back to uh, William the Conqueror through Rollo. Wow. Oh, Rollo. Oh, yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. I, um, I, uh, I did an interview with, um, well, actually, I spoke to him before I did the interview. A guy, a guy named Kai White. He's in Texas, and mm -hmm. he's really big on the on the um, uh, Crusades. He's written books about them, mm -hmm. and he does charts uh, through Gateway Ancestors back to England. So if you have a Gateway oh, Ancestor and you can get back to England, yeah, he, he does these awesome, really awesome charts. He he doesn't do your typical grandparent you know type of chart. Mm -hmm. uh, he traces back the noble roots. So wow. I found him and I said. You know, I have Italian nobility through mm -hmm. this Caracciolo family, and this was yeah. my third or fourth great grandfather. And can you do me a chart? And he said, "Well, I don't know. I've never done an Italian before. <laughs> I said, I do Americans. I don't." So he said, "But said, give me the name. Give me what you know, and I'll check it out. And if I can, I'll I'll do it." Uh, yeah. So sure enough, he he was able to do it, and he came back and he said, "Yeah, I I can do it. I you know, you're." It's my third or fourth great grandfather, maybe fifth, Ambrosio Caracciolo. Uh, and through him, he was able to do this chart and, you know, trace me back to Rolo. Uh, and um, I just I just reposted my, his Ragnar real post because he wasn't, at least probably wasn't real. Uh, Rolo wasn't real? No, Ra Rolo was real. Oh. Ragnar wasn't. Oh, Ragnar. Ragnar was it? Yeah, uh, Ragnar's was son, like a Norse was god or something, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he. Yeah, they. You know, there's different stories about it that he was yeah. two or three different people, maybe. Mm. Uh, that it, he just mythical, totally like King Arthur type. Of oh, guy. like King Arthur. Yeah. 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 Uh, but his sons, his sons, Ragnar's sons were real. Or oh, at okay. least the people that were attributed to being his sons. Yeah. Uh, and Rollo had nothing to do with Ragnar, yeah. From, from my research, but he was he was the first Duke of Normandy. I have a copy of uh, Burke's. There was um, it's a, a used copy from like the 1950s. It's I mean the thing is it's like this thick, you know, and it has all those charts. I've looked at all those about the Dukes of Normandy and the the Counts of Anjou and all that. Yeah, I've, I've looked at all of that. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I have some Anjou in me, and I have some Capet, and I have Valois. I have some Valois yeah. in me. Valois. Um, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, they they yeah, all but, intermix with each other. Yeah, that was. Well, yeah, there were so many intermarriages mm -hmm. back then, you know, po for political reasons. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how they got land. That's how they got, you know, territory and, uh, and soldiers and, you know, commerce and everything else that came with that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how they did it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, through my research through, through those families, you know, I never realized uh, before unification about all these Italian cities and, you know, every, every, almost every city was its own little fiefdom. And these people were mm -hmm. warring for hundreds of years back and forth and trading oh, yeah. properties and giving towns of dowries and things like that. It's, yeah. Uh, much more so than probably, you know, France and England and, and, and Spain. Yeah, I've I've heard there was uh, there was a lot of um, uh, poison being sold in Italy. I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then daggers. Yeah, there was I think a lot of more of that going on in, in England. It was just like you know what they called um, uh, judicial executions, I guess, or things like that. Or you know, there, there was. I mean, if you read English history, to me, it reads a lot like um, organized crime. I mean, it really does. If you look at uh, at English history, and and I've seen some of these documentaries, I find that very fascinating to look at uh, the situation to the point that just because you were a noble doesn't mean that you know that your lifespan was going to be any longer than a peasant because you could get a dagger in the back just as easily easily as they could get a you know a disease or something you know. So and and I have I have 
I have a lot of that. I have evidence of that in my family. One of the interesting things I found, I think it was, I think it was the Orsini family. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going through it and I see this guy was the, uh, he was the, the justice, right? Mm -hmm. But really back then, the justice was really the guy who signed the death penalty, right? Right, yeah, exactly. He was the executioner. Yeah. And so then I see his father was the executioner, and his father was the executioner. And his, so five generations of this one family, wow. father, the son, you know, the grandson, they were all the executioners for like 100 years in this, I forget where it was exactly, but. Uh, I was like, this was like the family business or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someday, son. <laughs> yeah, someday, son, you'll, you'll, you'll inherit the, you know, uh, the execution job. <laughs> <laughs> but to yeah. your point, there were a lot of poisonings and there were a lot of, uh, yeah. and, and even, and even uh, you know, father against son. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, cousin against cousin, brother yeah. against brother. Yep. There, there's there's a rumor that um, that Charles the first actually uh, caused the death of James in order to gain the throne. I've I've heard that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've 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 heard that also. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and I, and I'm trying. I still haven't found that. There's one person who I know is an, is an expert about uh, Italian nobility, and I haven't been able to get him to talk to me yet. Or maybe someday. But it's so yeah. hard to find even an expert. On, yeah, on. I know. We have uh, Faletti ancestry in uh, Pertuzio, and I've gone back as far as my fifth great grandfather, Stefano Faletti, from the death record of my uh, fourth great grandmother, Giovanna Maria Faletti. And um, it's in Latin, but it, it says his name, Stefani uh, Faletti. There were Falettis who were of the nobility. Yes, I, you know, that, I, that rings a bell, that name. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if we were from that family or not, because I can only find back to him. I think he died probably sometime before 1823. And the records, the online records in Pertuzio, they start in 1823. And I did ask um, my distant cousin in Pertuzio um, if they maybe he could go to the church and find records. He said right now there is no priest for the church. Yeah. So, yeah, so wow. I guess it's closed there in Pertuzio, the, um, the church of San Lorenzo in uh, Pertuzio. So, yeah, I was hoping maybe he could find Ste Stefano's, Stefano's um, death record and, um, and, you know, send me what it says, and then I would translate it and find, you know, further back, and maybe we could find uh, Stefani, I mean, um, uh, Paletti nobility. I know there's a distant cousin who uh, visited Italy, and he went to the castle, and they and he says there were these his um, relative. She told me that there was a, a picture on the wall that looked just like him, and it was um, one of his ancestors. Like they were saying, "Yeah, you are, you know, from this uh, family." You know, he was just visiting the castle as a tourist. You know, he didn't know yeah. it's his Paletti, but apparently it was. And uh, so apparently there's a distant connection to the nobility, supposedly, but I don't know what it is. So. Yeah, I don't know if, if you ever did. You ever see the picture of me with my uh, eighth great grandfather? Yeah, oh, what? Oh, the one that you've done. That, yeah, that is that is clever. I like that. That, that, isn't, that, that is isn't that crazy though? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. and how I found that was uh, they. Uh, I found it online. I found his picture, and I looked at it and I said, you know, I have I I have a photo <laughs> that's about the same age. Yeah. And there's a resemblance for sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, it was a color photo, so I made it black and white. So it looks a little bit, you know, more. Right. And, uh, and I showed it to my, because well, my wife would be the first one to tell me, you know, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I showed it to my wife and she says, oh my God, you look like him. <laughs> uh, but he, he, he had a, uh, he had a had little a bit, a little bit more money than I have. So. Yeah. And now his son, Francesco Bernino, owned uh, much of today's Campania. Wow. That's how rich these people were. That's how yeah. powerful and, and everything they were. Uh, and, you know, they, they intermarried a lot with the Spanish. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, because the Spanish, when they, they took over, they didn't 
take over all these little fe- they left the nobles there i mean they left things in place they were smart i guess leaving right. things in place mm-hmm. uh you know unification did away with all of that too quick and just ruined the whole country especially the south yeah as you guys from the north took over and, and you know, <laughs> yeah yeah the, uh, the the dukes of savoy were the uh, the kings of uh, piedmont and sardinia yeah those they became the kings of italy exactly yeah 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 and, it's our fault yeah and they decimated uh, <laughs> they decimated the the south uh, yeah but you know and, and that was the other thing that uh, that amazed me when we were there and you know we went to some of these ancestral homes the people still they they still um, talk about these nobles and they still revere them and they still they're still yeah. in their mind. Mm-hmm. It's truly incredible. Yeah, you would you wouldn't think that you would think that oh they like you know because like I know in England it's not like that you know it's in um, there's some people in England today that are really still bitter about the you know the nobility and all of that. Of course, they still have some of that you know. Um, yeah, some of the you know the dukes and earls, etc. They still have those titles, and you know. Well, you know, and I asked, I, I asked the question. I said, you know, why? Why are the people? Why do they still remember these people? And and they said, because for the most part, not every place, but for the most part, they were very good to the people. They yeah, gave them agriculture. They gave them land. They, mm-hmm. they you know, um, and they they supported the church. Uh, Pretty much almost on their own uh, in a lot of these places. They they gave the money to the church. They built the churches. They gave the vestments. They did all of these things. Right. Um, so yeah, they still have this this remembrance of them. Uh, yeah. Yes, good. Later, yeah. And yeah. the other thing that blew me away, and especially in in Calabria, the town we went to, um, was they still. That we went on this picnic and they still made the food themselves. Every, the cheese, the wine, the olive oil, everything was all made right there, fresh. Wow. Uh, no preservatives, no you know, yeah, no list of crap. In <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't eat that because uh, I'm allergic to something in there. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and everything, everything yeah, was was so great and fresh and everything. So um, good. But so the moral of the story is you got you got to get there at some point in time. You'll love it. You'll definitely yeah, love it. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, if these towns are are quite that small though. Um, Parascosano, I think, is uh, kind of a bigger area now, and uh, and Valperga, which is near there, we have ancestry there as well, is even bigger than that. So I mean, in 1823 in Valperga, there were over a hundred birth records. There were over a hundred baptisms. Just in 1823, so you can imagine. Yeah, it was a yeah, how so big it was a big back now. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it doesn't matter because you'll be still walking the streets that that. Oh yeah, yeah. From and that, we, yeah. you know, when we were in Naples, you know, Naples is huge. Um, but just knowing being in the old town and by the Duomo and knowing yeah. that, you know, the that's the feeling I I got in Gunnersville when I was there. Yeah, this is like my family. You know, walk these streets. You know, that's that's that is a neat feeling. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The family stomping ground. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, and everything is just, you know, so old. I mean, you know. Yeah, like a like a story you were telling about some some guy who was in the you were in some place and uh, he was like, yeah, I'm your uncle or something. Like he's real nonchalant. Like, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was uh, I forget. So, I forgot exactly what it was, but it was yeah, there. that was that was one of the people I interviewed. Yeah, <clears throat> he went to the town and he was sitting there and he looked over. Oh, the, 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 the guy was playing cards or something, and he's yeah. He went over to me and said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Big deal, so what? <laughs> but I, I, when I met my dad's first cousins over there, I was I can't even explain it. Because nobody ever nobody ever talked about it. I had no idea. I had no clue. Right. Yeah. I believe it existed. Yeah, and you said they had photos from from America. I guess somebody they, sent them they, photos. They had they had my parents' wedding photo, mm-hmm. with my grandmother's handwriting on the back. Yeah. So just imagine, I go to this place. I didn't even know where I was going. My yeah. cousin Nicola took me there. He didn't say where we were going or who we were going to meet, and uh, and then they introduced them and were talking and. They start taking out these pictures, and the first picture they pull out is my parents' wedding picture. Wow! Yeah. So you know, 
Uh, they, might have, they might have photos in Paris Crescento. I don't know. I don't Bertuzio, you know. Now I don't. I don't think that the, my distant cousin in Bertuzio has not said, "Oh yeah, I have photos of, you know, your mother." Or what? I don't. I don't. I don't think he's. Uh, he sent me photos of his family, but uh, he does. He didn't. Uh, he didn't say they had any photos of us. So I don't think he even knew who I was. Well, well yeah, and then and then uh, you know, a couple of months after we got back, he sent me pictures that my grandmother sent over there a hundred years ago. To her father. Yeah. You know, so I mean, we're blessed in that we have the internet. We can make connections like that. <laughs> well, listen, Barry, this is great. I'm glad we finally were able to get we finally the, got connected. I know. It's, 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 it took a <laughs> bit. Working. My, my being technologically challenged, I think, is uh, the biggest hurdle to get over. <laughs> uh, but you helped um, me through it. So I thank yeah, you. Yeah, we got there. We got Grazie. there. Grazie mille.